good evening everyone i am professor shalini sahai from ec department sagar institute of research and technology today i am going to discuss about the properties of z transform and its roc in this lecture now first we introduce and talk about the z transform it is its theory is based same as with the laplace transform as all we know that laplace transform is to is used to convert differential equations into the algebraic equation likewise the z transform is also a special case like uh, laplace transform and it converts the difference equation into algebraic equations we know that the convolution of the two signal results in the product of the z transform so it z transform is very useful in the signal processing now the z transform it is a special case of the laplace transform and results from applying the laplace transform to a discrete time signal here we will convert this laplace transform into the uh, z transform by converting the transform to the discrete time signal x x this is the laplace transform that is s represents the s domain where the real part it is your sigma and imaginary part is the j omega here we are integrating the continuous time signal this is the laplace transform now here we are converting the limit del t tends to zero and this continuation sign that is the integral sign is now changed into the summation sign as the z transform is used for the discrete time signal now let us consider this transformation map the s plane this is the s plane and it will be equivalent to the z plane so this is the s plane which is used for the continuous time signals and here the z transform which is used for the discrete time signals here we have put s is equals to j omega and z is equals to e s and this is the time change del t matlab small change in the time now j omega axis maps the unit circle now as we know that the laplace transform s is equals to sigma plus j omega where sigma represents the real part and this is the imaginary part so by putting the here s we are uh, converting this uh, laplace transform into the z transform now if we know that continuous time system is stable as its pole lies on the left side of the half plane so as we know that if a system is stable then all the poles should lie on the left hand side now uh, if we consider the discrete time system now the stability condition will be if its poles are inside the unit circle so we in terms of the discrete time signal we say that all poles should lie in the inside this boundary means unit circle the z transform behaves much like the laplace transform and can be applied to difference equation and to produce frequency and time domain responses now we will consider roc roc which means that region of converge and its relationship to the discrete time fourier transform now we can derive the discrete time fourier transform by setting z is equals to r e to the power of j omega so now we will relate that the z transform is very much related with the discrete time fourier transform so in the equation z transform equation is x z is equals to summation of x n e to the power of minus j omega n now in this case what we have done that we have put the value of z is equals to r e to the power of j omega 
and by substituting we find that the roc is the region for which a uh, for which this summation means z transform value should be less than infinity so it should consider a finite value now depending only on r is equals to mod of z just like the roc in the s plane for the laplace transform depends only on the real part so for the region of converge we have to depend only upon the real part now if the unit circle is in the roc then discrete time fourier transform exists for example if we take an signal a to the power of n un a right sided signal so we know that this unit step function exists from 0 to infinity now if we find the z transform for the given signal what we have done xn uh, is replaced by xz which uh, indicates that we are finding the z transform now we put this signal in the definition of the z transform where the summation sign n minus infinity to plus infinity and this is the signal and z to the power of minus n now what we have done the put the limits so any signal which is multiplied by the unit step signal then its limits will be changed from 0 to infinity so we have taken the summation sign and n from 0 to infinity a to the power of n un the value of unit step function is 1 so we have uh, taken 1 instead of un and now this will become an infinite series so by putting the values of n is equals to 0 the first element will be 1 then we'll put the value of n is equals to 1 then we'll put the value of n is equals to 2 so it will form an infinite series whose sum is represented by 1 upon 1 minus a z minus 1 which indicates that roc is an outside a circle of radius a and includes the unit circle which means its discrete time fourier transform exist so there is a zero at z is equals to 0 and we'll have an pole so this is the pole which is located at a so its region of converge is lies between the inside the unit circle so it will converge now with the help of roc we will uh, discuss the stability and the roc by taking the different examples here we have find the roc region for different values of a so here we have taken the value of a greater than 1 it is 1 and it is less than 1 so it is greater than 1 it is 1 and it is the exponential decaying pulse this is your rising pulse and for the different values of a we have plot the different roc for the given signals now if the roc is outside the unit circle then the signal is unstable so the main condition or main existence of the roc is that it should be outside the if roc is outside the circle means this roc is outside the unit circle then the system will be unstable and if its roc lies inside the unit circle then the system is stable now we have considered the uh, the example here we have taken the values of a negative so a value is minus 1.5 this is the region where a minus 1 and a is minus 0.9 and with we have taken the roc for the different conditions and we have concluded that the roc outside the unit circle the signal is always unstable and if the roc includes the unit circle then the signal is stable now we have consider more example then uh, we have shifted the unit step function 
and it is multiplied by the exponential pulse and we have uh, find the z transform so z transform is summation of n minus infinity to plus infinity x n z to the power of minus n and instead of x n we have put the given signal and we will find its roc now by putting and solving the above equation and with the uh, summation uh, of the infinite series x z comes to be z upon z minus a which means that there will be a, a zero on the origin and there will be a pole at located at z is equals to a now it is inside the unit circle now for the same signal sometimes the two signals are same but the roc differentiate the two signals now in this case again we will uh, take the values of a with the different values like this a more than 1 it is 1 and less than 1 so when we find the different roc for the this conditions then if roc includes the unit circle then the signal is stable and if it includes the unit circle then the signal is unstable so in this case for the different values of a we can conclude the different roc for the given same signal now the properties of the roc now we conclude these some properties which we have discussed and we have seen through the different numericals so the roc means the region of converge so the roc it is an angular ring ring in the z plane centered about the origin which is equivalent to a vertical strip in the s plane the roc does not contain any poles similar to the laplace transform now if xn is of finite duration then the roc is the entire z plane except possibly by z is equals to 0 or z is equals to infinity so now these are the different discrete time signals and their transform and which will show the different roc like this for xn it is del n means is the impulse whose transform will be 1 and roc will be the entire z plane now in the second example what we have done we have shifted the impulse on the left hand side and its transform is z to the power of minus 1 so its roc will not be zero and all other places places now we have taken the third example here we have shifted the impulse on the right hand side so its transform will be z and its roc will all the places except the z is equals to infinite so here we have also discussed the uh, same with the help of continuous time signals and it's in, uh, comparing with the laplace transform now if xn is a right sided sequence then mod of z is equals to r not it is in the roc then all finite values of z for which mod of z should be greater than r not are also in the roc now if xn is a left sided sequence then its roc will be the this is the left hand uh, left hand side signal then its roc will be the entire plane except at z is equals to 0 if xn is a two sided se sequence means it contains all the signals that is from minus infinity 0 and infinity then z will be r not is in the roc then the roc consists a ring in the z plane including the r not so it will form and ring whose radius will be r not for example we have seen that xn is equals to b to the power of mod of n where b is greater than 0 and it is xn we have taken now what we have taken the mod of n so we will consider both the sides of the signal so b n u n and plus b to the power of minus n u minus n so 
we have find the roc of the independent uh, signals and we have drawn it's the roc on the z transform now uh, we'll discuss some properties of the z transform like linearity we know that linearity uh, follows the superposition theorem which means that if more than one signal acting on a system then the total response of the system is the individual sum of their transforms so this property shows that this is a one signal this is two signal it is multiplied by coefficient a and this is multiplied by coefficient b then it results that x1 n uh, its z transform will be x1 z and for x2 n its z transform will be x2 z multiplying by the coefficients now in this we have proved this property by uh, taking the z transform on the left hand side and left hand side has been proved with the right hand side now time shift time shift means if a signal is xn and it is shifted in the time domain by a uh, quantity n not then what will be the change in z transform so the z transform will remain the same only it will be multiplied by z to the power of minus and not now to prove this we have taken the z transform of the left hand side so the way the definition summation uh, summation is equals to n is equals to minus infinity to a plus infinity and this is the signal and we have find out the z transform and by solving it we have proved the left hand side is equals to right hand side so if it's shifting its minus then the z will be multiplied by minus and if it's shifting is n plus then z will be multiplied by the plus n now if we multiply any signal by n so it results in the this property which is known as the differentiation property of the z transform and with this we have find out the taking the z transform of x z is equal to we know the definition summation of minus infinity to plus infinity x and z to the power of minus n we have differentiated on both the sides and by rearranging the order of summation we conclude that if a signal is multiplied by n in the time domain then its z transform will be x z and which is differentiated differentiated in the z domain and it is multiplied by minus z if we multiply by n square then this minus z will be power of 2 and differentiation will be d square x z upon d z square so what we uh, in this lecture we have introduced yeah, we have discussed the z transform and it is given by xz is equals to summation of n minus infinity to plus infinity xn z to the power of minus n then we have discussed the region of converge and its relationship to the existence of discrete time fourier transform and what will be the effect of stability then we have discussed three properties of the z transform one was the linearity second was the time shift and third one was the multiplication linearity which follows the superposition theorem time shifting means the signal will be shifted either right hand side and left hand side then its transform will remain the same only it will be multiplied by a constant term and if we multiply by a signal in the time domain by n then it will result in the differentiation in the z domain z domain that's all